All right, so let's start with the big story that we are tracking on Vyond at this hour, where Thailand has been in the grip of months of anti-government and anti-monarchy protests. Now, in a startling move, the country's governing council, interestingly, has said that the monks do not have the right to protest. In a statement by the Buddhist body, it has said, and I quote, the council has made a resolution to prohibit monks and also novices from involvement in politics, including joining of protests and expressing their political opinions. Now, there's not been a widespread participation of monks in protests that have drawn tens of thousands of people who are mostly students and youngsters, but some people have been seen joining the demonstrations wearing saffron robes. Interestingly, more than 90% of the people in Thailand are Buddhists, and religion is seen as an important pillar of the Thai society. Now, even in the realm of politics, government and monarchy, religion plays an important role. Now, many monks are rejecting this decision by the country's council and some are even wanting reform in the governing body itself as one of their demands in the ongoing protests. The protesters are seeking the removal of Prat Chan Ocha, the incumbent prime minister and also a former Janta leader who was held on to power even after the disputed elections of last year. The demonstrators also want a new constitution and a reduction in the powers of the king, saying that this has enabled decades of domination by the army. Now, under Prayat's Janta, the king has been given the power to appoint Thailand's chief monk to head the Sangha. This, even if the Buddhist governing council had picked another candidate, Thai monks are not allowed to vote and were already barred from politics in principle. All right, now to give us a better perspective in terms of what's actually happening in Thailand and why this decision by the governing council is such an important one, we are joined by Phil Robertson, who's a deputy director of the Asia Division of the Human Rights Watch, and he's joining us live on this broadcast. Now, Phil, thank you very much indeed for joining us here on Vyond. And let me begin by asking you this, the forbidding monks from taking part in these protests that have been ongoing in Thailand for the last several months, how significant is it? What has been the scale of participation of monks in these protests that have been ongoing against the government? And what message is the Thai government trying to send out here? Well, this is certainly a very serious order by the Sangha, uh, Supreme Council of Thailand, which is the Buddhist monastic order. And actually, it follows on several rounds of warnings uh, previously by that body uh, against monks who have supported the democracy protests. I mean, we have seen uh, a few monks uh, there at the protests in saffron robes, but certainly not uh, dozens or hundreds. Uh, you know, this is a, a handful here, a handful there. And our view, frankly, is that the Buddhist monks should not lose their basic human rights just because they are monks. Mm -hmm. uh, they should have the right to freedom of expression, the right to participate in peaceful public assemblies, and freedom of association just like anyone else. Absolutely, indeed. Now... Uh, recently, in, in one of the statements that was put out by the king, he said that Thailand is a land of compromise. A lot of people saw that as a bit of a green um, leaf that he was trying to wave at the protesters, perhaps indicating that he would like to compromise in a bit to reach middle ground with the protesters. Do you think by, by this interesting announcement that has been made that monks should not participate in these protests, that the administration in Thailand is actually hardening its stance in trying to quell the protests. Well, if there is a message of compromise coming from on, uh, above, it's certainly not reaching the uh, Saga Supreme Council because it is a very draconian order. Uh, you know, the, the monks have also been demanding reform of monastic rules as well, and, and that's not terribly welcome. Uh, within the within the Sangha Supreme Council, <clears throat> the problem is that you know there have been certainly double standards operating in Thailand when it comes to monks and political activities for many years. Mm -hmm. uh, the reality is that Buddhist monks who are politically active and supporting the government side or supporting uh, the previous military uh, coup government were allowed to do so, and right. we have seen in the past uh, monks leading protests uh, in in support of uh, the the government. And against also uh, other governments, uh, particularly the, the government of uh, Prime, then Prime Minister Yingluck Shinawat. There was a, a senior monk that was leading uh, an entire section of the protests uh, for better of five months uh, between November 2013 and May 2014 before the coup. And 
nothing was done to that person about uh, being a monk and being politically active. Mm -hmm. And at this point of time, Phil, do we know as to how the monks have reacted to this this order that has been passed uh, by the governing council of the Sangha? What do the monks have had to say? What do the monks have had to say on this interesting order which now forbids monks from taking part even in a pro-democratic -democ protest? Well, we have not seen uh, any reaction really from the monks. I mean, this, this order just came out uh, overnight. Uh, the reality, I think, is that we will see uh, some degree of defiance. Uh, a number of the monks, particularly from the northeast uh, of Thailand, which traditionally has been more progressive in terms of uh, the monkhood and uh, the forest monks who have been uh, more involved in social justice issues, I think will probably defy that. Uh, it will be hard for them to uh, effectively enforce outside of, for instance, some of the high-profile protests in Bangkok. So we'll see what happens. But uh, the reality is that this is uh, yet another turning of the screw, trying to create pressure on the protests and trying to diminish the support that they have uh, through repressive measures. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed, Phil Robertson, for joining us and getting us all those updates. Thank you.